So I want to record a video to talk about um, hardware addressing and tag addressing um, specifically in that in programming with uh, the, the Micro 850. Um, yes, we're using a simulator, but in real, I'm using a simulator here. In actuality, you might say what I'm doing is just more than is just making glorified memory bits with I.O. addressing. Well, you would be right, um, but it's good to help. Uh, conceptualize the fact that that these inputs and these in using these addresses in the real world. Um, a couple things. I just built a, a basic program, and when you do, make sure you, you hit the simulator start and the power on because if you don't, then nothing will show up in RS links. And since the last time I restarted my computer and the, my computer's IP address changed, so you might need to change that IP address um, in the um, configure driver. I just added another one. So just keep that in mind because if you're using DHCP, which is dynamic, um, dynamic, it's a protocol that basically means dynamic IP address getting, um, uh, your IP address could change every time you boot up your computer, um, unless you have, have it set for static. Uh, so that's an IP address that I'm sitting right here right now. Uh, I, I, it's in RS links. So I'm going to keep that running and I'm going to go back to the coordinate workbench. Now, if I wanted to add, any of these spots here are, are things that I could literally unscrew off and, and then kind of pop in a, a plug-in. Um, that way I could say rack space because the goal of these micros are to be take up a small amount of space. And if I wanted to, I could go here and I could add a, I could you know, right click on here, go to digital and add different types of digital, uh, digital cards, like a combination input output. Um, I'm going to put this one in and you can see there's a combination. If we, you know, if I zoom in, If I zoom in, you can kind of see uh, two rows here uh, of things. So, um, so keep that in mind. I could also add an analog card. I could add an analog card. So let me just do that. Remember, analog is a range, and that and that could actually configure it based upon current um, for each channel. Even you know, so like 60 hertz, I can en enable the input state. And this is a, 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 and I could do it based upon current or voltage, depending on how I want to set things up. So I'm just gonna keep it as is, just just so I can demonstrate. Um, in theory, too, I could actually have add-ons to this, and I'm not, because um, there's expansion modules that you could also add. So digital expansion modules, and I could add a 16, like a 16 uh, input setup. Um, and I could configure here the on off time between the two based upon milliseconds if I wanted to. I, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to delete that. Um, and then once, you know, once I'm here, I could, I could build, I could build it. And because I'm in, in theory, in the simulator itself, I, sh I could also add that here. Um, but I, since it's on, I can't add it. So if I power off, we're going to see something in a second. No, we're going to power off. Or since this is a simulator, let's see what happens because maybe I'll build it for me. And I'm going to hit download. So because I haven't had a connection path set up, it already brings up RS links for me. And I go to the one that's on right now. And let's see what it does. Now, uh, always download project values because if you just download, maybe some of your values get reset to zero uh, on accident. So always download with project values. And let's see, download successful. And let's see if it goes online. Yes. And look, it's giving me an error. Probably because the I.O. doesn't match up. So it's giving me a fault. Um, and it's telling me there's a fault. So we're going to go offline. We're going to disconnect. And I, I had a suspicion is because of the fact that my I.O. was not um, set up on the simulator correctly. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to make mention note of those, and I'm going to power down my power power it down. Or let me just exit and then turn it on again. 
And now I can just right click on this and, and add my digitals. So I'm gonna move this here so I can see. Digital, the IFQ for this one, and digital, you know, the analog IF4. All right, now that is set up that way, I can power on here, and I can download it again and see. Yeah, always before you download, always match the I/O. Uh, make sure your I/O matches the program you've created. If not, you're going to get errors. Oh, yeah, it's going to ask me. I'm going to hit yes. I want to download project values. And so now everything's hunky dory. It should be hunky dory. So hit yes to run, and now there should be no faults because my hardware is now matched. Yep, everything's hunky dory. So my hardware is matching. Okay, so yay. I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to disconnect. And let's go back to our, let's go to our global variables and see what type of addressing that gives us on that, on those uh, physical components that we just added. So now I, uh, so IO embedded digital input zero. Well, that makes sense. IO embedded digital input zero. So that embedded IO is what's on the top and bottom of that processor. Um, okay. Now, if I keep scrolling, here's all system bits, um, system bits that you can utilize. These are, you could do things, uh, you know, ones of note would be, there's a first, uh, first scan bit right here, power, you know, these are things that you can program with. Um, but down here, look what it says here, IO P, you know, P1 DO0, DI0. Well, let's go back to our, our simulator and let's take a look. Um, looks like we have, in, you know, so we, here's our D, uh, uh, PI1 and this is our O. So we have inputs and outputs that we're utilizing. So squares are the inputs, circles are the outputs. Um, but that's how things, those are how things are addressed. Like, uh, uh, you know, spot two or place, uh, place one, place two, place three, place four, place five, or, or plug in one, plug in two. That's probably what the P stands for plug in. So, you know, just like anything else, you know, where the embedded is the first or the, the local, you know, that's connected to the processors first, then anything else you add would be one, two, three, et cetera. So if this was here and you see IO, P3 underscore, if it's a digital input or digital output, that A stands for analog, so just keep that in mind. And so that's how everything um, gets addressed with these plugins. Um, if this was a slot, if this was slotted, um, it would probably be IO slot one. Um, let me I'll power off and let's see. Let's give it a whirl and see how the addressing works. Right click, we'll just do a digital IQ 16. Okay, I'm gonna power this on. Let's go back into the micro. Right click digital IQ 16. Again, the more IO I add, probably the more um, processing it takes. So just keep that, I try to keep it simple. But I'll reconfigure that and we'll download. And that way you can see what the addressing is. Download project values. Yeah, I would keep it simple, but why not give this a try? So I see successful, definitely downloaded, should be going to run mode. Yes. And now everything's hunky dory. If I wanted to turn these on, I can. Um, but let me go to my, let me go to my, um, global variables. And you can see it's being read right now. Uh, and, oh, it's X1. So, you know, so instead of slot one, it'd be X1. 
X, so you can see that's where everything is. If I if I'm reading that, if I go into my if I go into here and just start clicking these on, you can see that the value is is now on those physical values. If I go back to my processor, I could put in some random numbers here that would simulate the analog input. And you can see that that connects right here. If I want to turn on an output, I could literally just click these outputs on and look, these outputs turn on. So these are ways of checking things off. You know, these are just going to say wait to refresh. Um, but if I'm missing my global variables, I can toggle between these two and play around um, with that. Okay. So I'm going to go offline. I'm going to just go offline. And let's talk about uh, global variables, or local variables, and some and, and Boolean tags. So I'm going to add a program, ladder diagram, unless you feel really bold and want to go function block. And I want to talk about data types and memory bits because that's something that people struggle with. Because like I could go into my local variables and just set up a memory bit, anything I want to call it. I could call it just to, just to be funny. I could call it Tiger King one, or I could just call it Tiger King because that's my bit. Um, you can tell when this is being recorded. I could also add. I could go in and add another one. So hit me enter, and now that's a bool. So I can utilize that in a process that's on or off. I could do um, a dent. So temperature S Celsius. I'll do a temperature cell. I could change that to a dent. That would just, and that would be a number of some type. Well, uh, the other thing I can do is do something called an array. An array is, so if I do it this way, this would be like me just randomly throwing my papers anywhere. And if you're in a, if you have computer memory, and if I'm just randomly throwing information anywhere, it'd be hard to find. But if I organize things and, and just say, you know, look at the next paper underneath, the next paper underneath, the next paper, I can maybe organize things in a way that would allow the, the memory to be more efficient, but also there's certain processes I can utilize that could just be easily just go to the next slot, go to the next slot, go to the next slot. And that's what an array is used for. So it's a collection of the data types that are basically linked together um, in a relationship. And if I wanted to create an array, I have to go under dimension. And I have to put a, a bracket, so a square bracket, and I got to label how many elements I need. So one dot dot, and let's just say 32, and then close bracket. And if I hit enter, you will see that now I have an array of 32 bools that I can utilize. Because all that is, because anytime you see a bracket, and this holds true control logic, that's what tell me that's an element of an array. I could go in here and say zero. To, I could do. Um, let me do this again. I could do zero to thirty-one. Still the same amount, but now it's start. It's it's start, starting at zero. Okay. I could do the sit tape th same thing with with temperature Celsius or whatever. Bracket zero dot dot. 12. So, which makes it easier because if I have a bunch of bits that I want to utilize but don't want to number them all, now that's all there. Now look. Temperature zero, one, two, three, and I could utilize each individual one of those cells. So just to demonstrate, let me go to my program and I'm going to create a ladder logic just using my Tiger King bits. I could go here, put in my XIC. And now I could go in and utilize, I'll just use this one, hit OK. I'll put in another one. Tiger King. I'll just put in a random one. Doesn't have to be right next to one another. And then I'll turn on another bit. Because remember, all of these are our bits. And let me turn on Tiger King 22. 
okay, just for fun. So this is just like we're doing with I.O., except we're using memory beds, okay? Um, we haven't done much with, um, we haven't done much yet with uh, other types of data, but I'm going to point out one other important data type before we move into timers. Um, I'm going to go to local, and there is a, so if I wanted to, to set up, so when we start doing timers, we might do something that looks like this. So um, cook time. In control logics, you would just put it as a dent and do everything hunky dory. But in here, you will do a time setup. Okay? And if I want to set it, I could go to project value and usually we'll do T colon like five seconds and that should work. Okay? Um, just to highlight something, there is a command. Um, and I'm going to just put in one of these boxes here because I want to find it. And I think it's any, any to time. Or any to date or any to time. There's, this is a way to, to transfer bits from one type to another. So I'm going to do this any to time conversion here. And I'm going to put in um, my temperature, one of my temperature dents here just to demonstrate. So here's a dent. And I'm going to put in my oven time or cook time. Okay. And I'm going to demonstrate what that does. So I'm building my program because I've created some memory bits. So I want to make sure they show up. No errors. I'm going to hit download. Download project values, download resources. Yep, turn to run mode. And now I'm connected. Going back to my program. And you'll see because I had zero in here, things got converted to zero. So if I want to double check the, uh, it goes to variable monitoring. I can actually, so I double clicked on there. And this is cell zero. I can go in here and put in 1000. And you can see what it does, it turns that into one second. Okay, if I only did a hundred, that should be a hundred milliseconds. If I did sixty thousand, that'll turn that into a minute. So this is what we would put on in compact and control logic is just a sixty thousand. This will automatically convert it to a time thing that we can utilize in our timers. Um, so there, there's that taking up. But then with this logic command, if I wanted to. If I hit Control T, it's going to toggle the bit for me. And look, it completes the logic. And if I double click on it, I can monitor. And look, it's on. If I go down to Tiger King 10, it's you know it's off. But once I go here, to, once I close this and toggle the bit, the run goes false. And then you can see under that memory bit, it's it's on. Because remember, when it's an XIO, it's saying it, it's asking the question, is it false? And if it's if it's true, then this this loses its power. So this is a little bit about hardware configuration, memory memory bits, and, and arrays, and ways to maybe make your life a little bit easier. Um, you know, so you can use any element of an array, and you can mix it in with you know uh, one last because where we can start using these memory bits is when we do HMI programming. Um, because those are not physical inputs. We have to match a memory bit with the buttons on HMI. So we want to introduce that now so that you're aware because in some cases you're going to um, troubleshoot programs that don't have physical buttons and uh, outputs attached, but maybe one of these memory bits. All right. Thank you for your time and I'm hoping you're having a good day.